American generals during the Revolutionary War? Uh, George Washington, Nathaniel Green, Anthony Wayne, and Philip Schuyler. You know, Rusty, you amaze me. I wish you were as good in your other subjects as you are in American history. Well, I like studying history. When I read about men like Washington and Jefferson and Patrick Henry, and what the way they fought for what they thought was right, well, I don't know, it makes me feel proud. And it makes me feel proud to think you feel that way, Russ. Hi, Dad. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Uh-oh. What happened today? Boy, I'm telling you. Hmm? What a day, what a day, what a day. Well, honey, what's wrong? Last night you said rehearsals were going very well. Oh, it's not the show. The show is going great. That's what's the matter. That's what's the matter. It's a law of average. Things have been going so good for me lately, I was a cinch to get it right in the kisser, and I got it today. Oh, what happened? I got a ticket for overparking. <laughs> But what kills me is I, I didn't deserve this ticket. Well, honey, don't let it get you all upset. I mean, it'll only cost you a few dollars. It isn't the money. It, I just don't deserve the ticket. That meter was off. You must be wrong. I'm not wrong. Look, I'm not the kind of a guy who always thinks he's right, but I'm never wrong. I mean... <laughs> the meter was off. Where did it happen? Right in front of Phil's apartment. But I pull in. I get out of the car, I drop the dime in the meter. Now, I check my watch, it's 11.15. I had a date to meet Phil at 11.30 to sign some contracts. 11.15, I put the dime in the meter. Loom, one hour it reads, so up I go. I come down 10 minutes after 12. Not quite. Not quite 10 after 12. And boom, violation. And there he stood, this cop, in all of his bluish splendor. <laughs> One of New York's finest, very proudly writing out a ticket for overtime parking. And you should have seen the look on his face. You'd think he was writing My Fair Lady or something. <laughs> oh, honey, why don't you go take a hot bath and cool off? <laughs> <laughs> Just burns me up, that's Dad, all. Dad, Daddy. What? Are you sure that meter was off? I'll bet you it's six or seven minutes off on the hour. Well, if you're so sure, what are you going to do about it? What can I do about it? Stick up for your rights. It's a very noble thought, my boy. But there's an old saying, you can't fight City Hall. Our ancestors did. What? They fought something bigger than City Hall. They fought a big country like England when they knew they were right. Remember they said, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands oh, which have tied oh, them oh, to oh, another... Oh, unload the cannons. Hey, <laughs> what's the American Revolution got to do with the parking ticket? Well, it's a matter of right and wrong, isn't it? Look, it involves just a few dollars. Forget it. Well, it involved just a few pennies when the British put a tax on tea. All right. But we fought them and threw their tea in the ocean. Russell, I promise you, the next time anybody overcharges me for tea, I'll throw the cup in the ocean, lemon and all. <laughs> oh, hi, Charlie. What's with the whole hi, Charlie? You know, if you don't come back to rehearsal, it's gonna be goodbye, Charlie. Once, once, I'd like to say to you, hi, Charlie, and have you say, hi, Dan. Mm. Don't get so excited, the rehearsals will be fine. Give your officers a break. Mm. See you later, love. Okay. Bye. Always complaining. We're gonna get this job done. Huh? Where's Daddy? <laughs> he went that way. <laughs> have to come in like the thundering herd. Daddy, you were right. You were right. Right about what? About that parking meter. I timed it with my stopwatch. It's wrong. How wrong? Five minutes and ten seconds wrong. No kidding. No kidding. I knew that meter was fast. Well, nice going, Russ. You'll make a great time with detective someday. Come on. Come on, let's go. Now that we've got the proof, you don't have to pay the fine. Sweetheart, it just involves a few dollars. It's not worth the trouble. I don't get you, grown-ups. You say one thing and you do another. Always fight for what's right, you say. Except when fighting for what's right means a little trouble. No. Then forget the whole deal. What would have happened if the men at Bunker Hill had thought like that? They had parking meters on Bunker Hill? <laughs> no. No, they didn't. They had men who wouldn't tolerate injustice. Now, Russell, let's not make a big thing up. Think for a minute, Daddy. If it hadn't been for them, 
England could have gone right ahead taxing us without representation. And today, you'd be walking around wearing a monocle and I'd be playing Little League cricket. <laughs> what, what, is he running for president? I mean, I know the candidates are getting younger all the time, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Wait a minute, Charlie. Just a minute. I mean, don't make fun of the kid. It so happens he's right. Tell you what I'll do, son. Yeah, Dad? I'll stop by the traffic court and straighten out this whole thing. Danny, we got a rehearsal. You got no time to get involved with courts. I'm not going to get involved. I'll just go down there and present the facts. It'll take a minute. I'll drop you off at the club on the way. Come on. Daddy, can I go with you? Under one condition. What's that? That you don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Okay. Shall we go? Sir, I'm, uh, I'm Williams. Danny Williams, this is my son, Russell. How do you do? Yes, sir. Uh, told me the information desk, you're one of the judges of the traffic court? That's right. Well, sir, I came to see you about a ticket I got for overparking. Well, this isn't the right place to talk about it. When your case comes up, you can say anything that you have in your mind. Well, that's just it, sir. There's, there, there's no case, you see. I, I didn't deserve this ticket. <laughs> Well, no one thinks he deserves a ticket. Now, if you'll just excuse me. Well, no, no, I, I really didn't deserve it. See, the meter was off. It, it was fast. Uh, five minutes and ten seconds fast. My son here, he timed it with his stopwatch. Yes, sir. See yes, that? Sir. See? Mr. Williams, our meters were installed by a reputable firm of engineers. Now, I'm quite sure that the mechanics are more accurate than a child's stopwatch. Child? What do you think? It's a toy or something? It's an official stopwatch. I bought it for him for his birthday. It's for track meets and basketball games and stuff like that. Well, granting for the sake of argument that it is a regular stopwatch and assuming that it's in proper running order, yeah. it is still quite possible that your little boy doesn't know how to operate it properly. What stop with it? Click it starts, click it stops. That's all I do. <laughs> what do you think? He's stupid? <laughs> Mr. Williams, I haven't the time to discuss your son's IQ. Now, when you appear in court, you may offer a plea of not guilty, if you so desire. That is exactly what I so desire, because I'm not guilty. Very well. You will appear before me for trial next Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Wait, wait. The day. But, but before you, you mean you're going to try me? Well, that's what the taxpayers of the state of New York pay me to do. Well, hello. What chance am I going to have with you trying me? You've already made up your mind. The stopwatch is all wrong, and my son is stupid. <laughs> Say justice is blind around here, it's cockeyed. Come on, Russ. Just a minute, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, would you follow me into the courtroom? Oh, I thought that would get a little action from you. Remember that as long as you live, just show them you're not afraid and you'll get action. Now, wait for me downstairs in the car. Can I go with no, you? No, wait for me in the car. Oh. Russ. Bailey, will you call this court in session? Now, Your Honor? Now. Hear ye, hear ye. Traffic Court, District 18, City of New York is now in session. Judge Palmer presiding. Take off your hat. <laughs> now, Mr. Williams, would you please repeat that last remark you made in my chambers? Huh? About the condition of justice around here. It had something to do with the eyes. I said around here it's cockeyed. Thank you. That'll be a $10 fine for get to court. <laughs> So that's why you got me in here, to rook me out of $10. Boy, what a racket you got going for you. That would be another $10. Gee, some judge. Just because you got on a black nightgown doesn't make you a judge. <laughs> that will be another $10 contempt of court. Yeah, well, I got plenty of contempt for this court. $10. I demand a jury trial. That is within your rights. Next Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. Now, you pay your contempt fines to the bailiff. Best money I ever spent. A uh, $50 bill. $50, your fine is 40 and 10 change. Just a minute, please. <laughs> We're even. <laughs> Next case, Your Honor, City of New York versus Danny Williams. Mr. Williams, will you please rise? You have been charged with overparking in a metered zone. Do you wish to contest this charge? I do, Your Honor. You represented by counsel? I couldn't get any... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm acting as my own lawyer, Your Honor. Very well. The prosecution proceeds. Your Honor, the defendant is going to attempt to prove that he is an innocent victim of a crooked parking meter. 
I'm sure the ladies and gentlemen of the jury share my feeling as to how ridiculous this whole thing is. Is it ridiculous for a man to fight for what's right? You're out of order. So is your parking meter. <laughs> Please sit down. At first, Your Honor, I was puzzled as to why a well-to-do entertainer would go to such great lengths as a jury trial to avoid paying a $5 fine for overtime parking. Then the answer came to me. Obviously, business at the club where he's working has been falling off, and he's using this ridiculous trial to procure a bit of publicity, he thinks, the notoriety will probably help his ailing career. I object. Objection overruled. I object to your overruling my objection. <laughs> the defendant will refrain from any future outbursts and sit down. Your Honor, I don't intend to dignify this procedure by calling witnesses. I will let the facts speak for themselves. I will go by the citation issued by the officer Mulrooney who has been with the parking meter division for seven years, mind you, seven years, and at that time, nobody else has ever questioned one of his citations. Mr. Williams is guilty of violation code two, section 204, and should be required to pay the prescribed fine by law. The prosecution rests. You may proceed with your defense. You're nuts. <laughs> In view of the prosecution's accusation that I'm doing this whole thing for publicity because business is so bad at the club where I work, I would like to call an unscheduled witness, Mr. Charles Helper. Charles Helper, take a stand. I don't want to go. You gotta go. He called me. What am I gonna do then? What? What am I? Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Do I have a choice? You don't. I do. <laughs> Your name? Oh, come on. Will you? <laughs> Answer the question. He knows my name. He sees it on his paycheck every week. <laughs> Answer the question. <laughs> Charles Sylvester Halper. <laughs> Are you the owner of a certain... Sylvester? <laughs> You, the owner of a certain club called the Copa that employs a very well-known entertainer? Well, I'm not sure because he never shows up for rehearsals. <laughs> you mind pointing him out to the court? What point them out? You know him. Him is you. <laughs> and I, and I, I'd like to point you out to the first head doctor we could find. <laughs> you're sick. Oh, you're sick. <laughs> Well, the court kindly asked the witness to confine his remarks to the questions asked. Yeah, one year of high school, a regular Clarence there. All right. <laughs> Order in the court. You heard the prosecution state that I asked for a trial by jury to get publicity to help business at your club because it's so very bad. Yeah, yeah, what kind of crack is that, huh? You know, we don't need no publicity. Business is great. We've been packing them in every night. <laughs> You're sure of that? I am sure of that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hmm. No more questions. Thank you. Yeah, and look, incidentally, being we're packed every night, we can still use more people. So don't feel funny because we can always crowd in a little more and see a little more social. <laughs> that will do. Yeah. Good thing. He's good for that. <laughs> I'd like to call the next witness, Master Russell Williams. Russell Williams, take the stand. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Be seated. What is your name? Russell Williams. Russell, I show you a photograph. Can you identify it? Yes, sir. That is the parking meter in front of Uncle Phil's apartment where you had your car parked. Thank you. I submit, Your Honor, as Exhibit A, a picture of the parking meter, number 985248. <laughs> that is the same number as is on the parking ticket. That is Exhibit A. Young man, here is a stopwatch. Can you identify that? 
Yes, sir. That is the stopwatch I used to time meter number 985248. And what were your findings? The meter was five minutes and ten seconds fast. Thank you very much. That ends my questioning of this witness, and that is Exhibit B. Prosecution like to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. How old are you, little boy? I object. I object. I'm on to you, wise guy, trying to discredit the witness. What's that little boy stuff? Where did you go? <laughs> Objection overruled. How old are you, little boy? Thirteen. You're the son of the defendant, Mr. Williams? Yes, sir. This uh, stopwatch, Exhibit B, the one you timed the parking meter with, did you ever have it checked for its accuracy by a competent watchmaker? Well, it, it does need to be checked. It works fine. Answer the question. Well, I never had it checked. I see. But since you never had it checked, it's quite possible that it is inaccurate, is it not? Well, it's possible, yes. Do you consider yourself an expert at timing things? Well, you don't have to be an expert to use a stopwatch. I see. Uh, tell me, little boy, did anyone coach you as to what to say here on the witness stand? Coach? That's right, coached. Well, uh... Young man, remember you're under oath. Did anyone give you any advice how to act here as a witness? Yes, sir. Who? My father. Uh-huh. Will you tell the court exactly what you were advised? Yes, sir. He advised me to watch out for you because you try to rattle me with a lot of sneaky questions. <laughs> that will be all. Young man, you may step down. I'd like to call my next witness, Your Honor, Mr. John Bradley. John Bradley, take this down. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Be seated. How old are you, little boy? <laughs> I'm 43 years old. 43? You're, you're not my son, are you? Please confine yourself to the proper questioning. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Your name? John Bradley. John Bradley, did you check the timing on parking meter number 985248? Yes, yes, I did. You please tell the court what were your findings. Well, that meter is fast. Five minutes and ten seconds every hour. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Mr. Bradley, do you consider yourself an expert in stopwatches? Well, no. Uh-huh. But I am familiar with other timing devices. I'm employed by a firm that makes timers for the Polaris missile and various satellites. <laughs> to be exact, we use the atomic chronometer, which measures time against the vibrations and oscillations of the ammonia molecule. <laughs> Defense rests. You may step down. Mr. Adams, are you ready for your summation? I am, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have just seen an elaborate production staged by a master showman. And I'm sure that Mr. Williams does not care what your verdict will be, because he set out to gain attention and publicity by forcing this trial. And I'm sure the newspapers will accommodate him with plenty of space. However, it is up to you to show him that you are not confederates of his by returning with a verdict of guilty. I have nothing further to say because I am as eager as you must be to see the conclusion of my opponent's performance. So I relinquish the spotlight to him for his summation. And you know something? It wouldn't surprise me in the least if he opened with a song. <laughs> Your 
Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm very much tempted to follow the prosecutor's uh, suggestion to open with a song, but there's only one song I can think of that would fit the occasion, and it starts, My Country, Tis of Thee, Sweet Land of Liberty. And I'm sure that he would consider that quite corny. But then again, maybe I should sing it. I mean, why should I be ashamed of corn? George Washington wasn't ashamed of it. Neither was Thomas Jefferson or Patrick Henry. Now, this whole thing started because my son was so saturated with the spirit of our founding fathers that he couldn't stand to see me submitting to an injustice. Now, I know this is just a parking violation. And I didn't want to make a big fuss about it, not really. And I told him so. And I, I said to him, son, you know what they say, you can't fight City Hall. A cliche, of course. But then as this thing caught up with me, I realized you've got to fight City Hall when you think it's wrong. City Hall is the government. And the government is the servant of the people. And each of us has an obligation to all of us to see to it that that government does not perpetrate an injustice however unintentional. Now, I know that our government wouldn't have crumbled because a mixed up parking meter hooked me with an unfair $5 fine. But if I didn't do something about it, that meter would have continued to penalize the innocent until someone came along who was willing to fight City Hall. I tell you, if the day ever comes when no one is willing to accept this fight because it's too much trouble or, or too expensive or, or too inconvenient, if that day ever comes, then we should take all the history books out of our schools and burn them because our kids are going to be confused. Our children are never going to be able to understand why brave men gave their lives for this government in places like Valley Forge and Chateau Theory and Guadalcanal and the rest. Your Honor, I, I usually finish my act with a very funny punchline. But right now, I can't think of one. Thank you. Mr. Williams, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I direct you to bring in a verdict of not guilty. And Mr. Williams, those fines I levied against you for contempt, the money will be refunded. <laughs> will the prosecutor approach the bench? Yes, Your Honor. We start rehearsals in 20 minutes. I can't go to rehearsal. Bite your tongue. What do you mean you can't go? I, I gotta go back to court. Danny, Danny, look, please. You've been making all week like Nathan Hale. So now you're a big hero. So from now on, all the schools will be closed on your birthday. <laughs> and I'll tell you something. If you don't pay attention to your work, my club will be closed every day. <laughs> can't help it, Charlie. I got another ticket. No. <laughs> When we came out of the court the other day, I came down and there was a ticket on my car for being parked too close to a fire hydrant. So I sent Rusty to the hardware store and got a tape measure. And what do you think we found out? I said, I'm going to do something! <laughs>